to the degree that those things are adopted and, and appear in organizations, and there's a million reasons why they might not. You know, there's all kinds of people that, you know, can, being confronted by these tools and they'll say, oh, it's just another headache. It's another thing I have to do. I'm too busy. You know, we already have email. We already have SharePoint. We don't need all this junk. So there's a million reasons why people can opt out and, you know, all sorts of reasons why uh, that can happen and, you know, uh, independently of the tools, completely uh, extrinsic to the tools. And in some cases, you know, it might be a tool that's not very good and, you know, that that also leads to that. But to, in the examples that I'm aware of in which there's a widespread adoption and, and people uh, take on these tools, they, have a, they do have a transformative uh, impact on people and there's a you know, million soci you know, sociological and psychological reasons why. And so, um, you know, the, the, the bottom line of all that is that potentially people could be happier. They could have closer relationships in the business setting and more of them. Um, and uh, there's some indicator that suggests that the use of these tools in some ways leads to a greater sense of personal satisfaction. And that arises either from a greater degree of autonomy or a greater sense of connection and a greater sense of shared purpose. There's a million different dimensions there, but um, uh, at the bottom line is for business that you know, in a sense, if they they may not care that people are happier and feel more, you know, more autonomy, but they're perfect. They're really happy to find out that people are more productive and come to work more often or whatever. So, um, uh, so I think I think it's uh, you know, it's one of those things where, given the right setting, the right circumstances, it can have an, a, a large impact, a measurable, non-marginal impact on people's. Uh, uh, work.